Oh, hello everyone. So welcome to knowledge sharing session on lease accounting. This is the second video of this series. So in the previous video, we talked about basic about uh, the what is the lease accounting, how is it different from finance lease or fixed asset, and then how to enable lease accounting module in fusion financials. That's what we discussed. Now let us proceed from there. So after enabling the lease accounting in instance, you will get this kind of uh, tab will user will get the user which, for which the data access has been given. So once we click on that, we come to this page. Now this page contains the uh, different options, different tasks. Uh, the setup also is there in the same page first, okay? So first, uh, let us talk about the setup. So click on the lease configuration setup. So here you can see different options. So first is the system options. So these are the, uh, in fact, three different configurations: system options, discount rate index, payment template. We will I will discuss that one by one. So system options is basically when we enable for particular business unit. So what kind of uh, control for that particular B we are going to give that we configure in system options, okay? So let us first uh, see that. So for a particular business unit, as I said earlier, uh, by default, we have two different types of calculation for a lease in lease accounting. One, Complying to IFRS 16, second complying to AS, AS, ASC 842. We need not be enabling both, but if you want, you can enable both. I have enabled both here. So when you enable both, then we must have one secondary lecture with conversion level set at sub lecture. Okay. A sub ledger, uh, uh, sorry, a secondary ledger having conversion at journal or balance will not work here. So, if you have a secondary ledger with conversion level as sub ledger, then only you can have both the options. Uh, then, then only you can select both the options. Otherwise, you have to work with only one. So, that is one. Now, coming to the amortization calculation frequency. Now, this is like, uh, how do you want to depreciate the asset? So we have two options, monthly and daily. I have selected daily. So based on the number of days, the depreciation will be calculated. Uh, when we create one asset, we see the values, I will explain this more at that point in time. Second point is interest calculation method. There is only one option given only by now, only one option is the daily compound interest. So the whatever interest we give for the, this is basically related to the cost of capital. Just allow me to complete this uh, slide, then I will explain this. Because the next uh, setup is related to the discount rate, right? So um, that is what is related. Uh, that is related to this particular method. Next, for the payment processing, do we want to integrate to payables or not? Once we, if we integrate to payables, then the payment of the lease will happen to different suppliers. Will happen from payables. So if you want to use payables to do the payment, enable this option as yes. Okay. Now, these are the two things, auto lease numbering and auto asset numbering. I have set it no. If you set it yes, then you need to create a document sequence for the lease accounting module in your instance. So this is what the system options is. The next setup what we have is discount rate, okay? Now, a very detailed example is given in my the video 
related to the finance lease. Uh, so you can refer that uh, series of videos, but just sake of, for sake of completion, let me open one Excel file to explain what is this discount rate index. Okay, so this is the one Excel file which I had prepared earlier. Uh, the same we can use to understand what is the discount rate index. Okay, so let us say that uh, we take one lease with uh, initial down payment payment of twenty thousand as a security deposit, and every month we pay five thousand. Okay, now so this we will and the lease is for five years. So on the zero period we are going to pay twenty thousand. In the first period, end of first period, we are going to pay 5,000. End of second period, again, we are going to pay 5,000, this recurring payment. And that is how the payment will happen to the every month. Okay. Now, if we are going to make, this is my cash outflow. So what is the present, uh, what is the present value of my cash outflow? That is what we need to calculate first. Because based on that only, we are going to do the capitalization of my finance lease. So when we do the cap, when we capitalize the finance lease, we need to debit the ROU asset cost, right? So what is that cost? To find that, we need to find, uh, to uh, arrive to that particular value, we need to find the net present value for the total cash outflow. Now, whenever you want to calculate a net present value for any cash outflow, we must know the cost of capital. So that cost of cost of capital is nothing else but the discount rate index. As you here, I've taken the discount rate index is 5%. So how is that calculated? So in the end of the first month, we are going to pay 5,000. So present value for the, of that 5,000 today, is this amount. This is the formula what we, uh, we, we, we must, must have read in our school days that it, it, it goes with a compounding interest formula. Okay, So, so if this is the uh, final amount. So what is the principle for that? For that particular, uh, if the payment has to be done after a month. So this is the formula I have done. Similarly, for each cash outflow, we do the we calculate the present value. And when we calculate this present value, one of the parameter for that is my cost of capital. Okay. This is the value, 0.004167. Because 5% is the per annum rate. And since we are going to pay every month, so what is the per month interest rate that I have put it here? So this is what the discount index. So the total value of all the, so whatever amount we pay, 5,000 every month, the present value for, the total present value for that is this amount, okay? Now this plus the final value, this is we are paying on the zero particular, zero day, right? So the value for this will remain same, the net present value and the actual value will be same. So this plus this will become the asset cost, okay? So the discount index we need to give to calculate the, uh, right of use amount, asset cost of the finance case. I hope this is clear. So after, after defining the system uh, option, we need to create an index. So what is the cost of capital for that? So is it 10%, 8%, whatever. So this we need to attach when we calculate the lease. So this is the second configuration. Now coming to the third configuration. So before I go to the third uh, with that is, which is the payment template. Assume the business case, what we are going to take is that, let us say we have a, we are taking office building on rent where we need to pay 20,000 per month as a rent, okay? And we need to pay two months of security deposit. That will be one time payment, right? right. So these are the, to different types of payment, what we are going to do, or assume that this is an insurance payment. Assume that we are doing this one time. A contract is for one year. We are going to pay 20,000 per month to my asset owner. 
and 40,000 is the insurance amount which we need to pay in the beginning of the contract start. These are the two different payments which will go to two different uh, vendors. Okay. Assume that is the case we are going to take. So then we have to take, we have to define two payment templates. One is the, for the monthly rent. Okay. Now here, if you say, if you see, we, give, we can give the payment frequency, like different options, what we have monthly, annually, one time, that kind of thing. So since this is a monthly rent, every month we are going to pay, what will be the payment term? You can select this comes from AP. Okay. Who is the vendor? Whom we need to pay this? So this is what you can configure here. So whenever an invoice gets created for this particular payment, invoice will be created for this particular supplier in payables so that we can do the payment to the, this supplier from payables. Now then we have, uh, do we need to include this in liability or right of use? These are same as we have in our finance list. There I have detailed it, uh, what does it mean actually, okay? Then we need to give the different accounts for this particular payment, like payment, payments clearing, amortization, payment liability, right of use, everything we need to do here. These are the accounts referred by SLA while creating accounting for the lease. The second type of uh, payment just ignore the name here. I have meant written security deposit. Ideally, it should be insurance. So just pardon me for this mistake. The point which I want to highlight here are few. The payment frequency here is one time, okay? Because the lease I'm going to create for one year. If we have the lease for multiple year, we can give the payment frequency as annually. Okay? But since it's for one year, so I've just given, given it one time. Another point, supplier here is different from the previous one. We see in the previous template supplier was this, where in this template supplier is different. So this is what I wanted to highlight also when I explained the difference between finance lease and the lease accounting. In finance lease of the fixed asset what we have, the payment will happen only to one supplier for one lease. Whereas in case of lease accounting, we can do payment to different suppliers for one lease. That we will see when we see the when we do the transaction. So, and then we have to create the accounts. So these are the setup part. Okay. So that's all for today's video. Uh, in the next video, we will do the transactions and see. Uh, accounting and the data flow to AP. So till then, bye for now.